episode of the Grace Family Love Podcast. We are back at it again. Yay. Um, I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, we actually had a productive morning, so which is really, really good. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's new for us, so it's definitely um, appreciated. So we wanted to talk to you guys about something that um, actually was a topic last week and we didn't get around to it. So I feel like it's important and I feel like it's really needed right now. Uh, especially in relationships and in marriages. Um, and it's about sex. Our guys are going like, wait, let me turn this up right quick. Um, actually, love and sex. So two different things that you think are separate, but they're actually, they should be together. Yeah. So what is it about the two that you think is mistaken for being separate? So there's a verse in the Bible that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and read it. And as I read it, I, I'm like, I know, I think the thoughts that I'm having will, will come out. So it's in Ephesians 5, 22, and it says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ um, is the head of the church, his body and himself, um, its savior. Savior. Now, as the church submit to Christ, so also wives submit in everything to their husbands. Now, here is where it comes in. It says, Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So, in another version, it says, um, Wives, respect your husband. And the reason why this is so important, I feel like those two things go together, is because a lot of the times, when you respect or when you love, you treat somebody differently. You know, you do. Yeah. Um, however, when it comes to sex, something that actually God created, like he created it, he created it for us. You know, and because Satan is the ruler of this world, like he corrupts every single thing that God made pure and good. He makes sure that he grabs it and he turns it around and he just puts, he puts his name all over it. But it's, it's just tainted and it just it distorts it. So one of the things that I've been, I've been seeing a lot and I saw it on a couple of the group messages um, with like the moms were saying like, you know, pornography is a big thing right now. It's, it's in, it's like, you know, why not? There's a, um, I'm not going to say the Instagram name, the handle, but there's a guy and a girl that are like sex coaches. And they were talking about how, to make sure that you do watch porn before you, you know, just have sex. And I'm, I'm, I was so sad because here are people that are just like trying to figure out how to have a better relationship with their spouse. And all they're missing is those two ingredients. They're missing the respect and they're missing the love. And what I mean by that is if you really respected your husband and for like the fact that even he just wants to have sex, I mean, respect that that part of saying like, you know, like not that you owe him anything, yeah. but just that you honor that, you know, that you honor his feelings for you. And the fact that when your husband, when your wife honors you for that, then also in return, love her for that. You know what I mean? So because the guy it is, it's more about like the physical part, the emotional part, like not the emotional, just the let's get it going. And the girl, it's the more the foreplay, the the let me just kiss you, let me say these nice words. And we're missing those two ingredients. And then we're wondering why we're so empty or why our love life, quote unquote, is not doing great. But then we're just looking about, we're looking for the, what is it, like the ingredients or the, um, just like, not ingredients, what is it called? Like I'm not sure. Like oh that. my gosh. Like we're looking for the answer to that in the wrong places. Mm. You know, and... And it, this, the next thing is just like, well, then let's just watch somebody else have sex and that'll turn us on. Like missing a spark or something. Yeah, and the sad part is that those two things literally go against what God is saying. That's, there's no respect to your husband with that. Think about it. Like, would I really invite, I'd be like, let me invite this hot guy with muscles, blah, 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 like look like this and let me have him have sex right in front of us so let me just imagine this. Let me look. How is that respectful to you yeah. in any shape or form? Like zero. But yeah. the guys are like, dude, that's hot. Is it really? If that was physically like real, if that was happening in real life, would that be that your 
wife or your significant other is coveting somebody else? Like, yeah. is it? You know, and vice versa. There is nothing love about it because it's like, let me let me get turned on by this. That way I can just use you and then I just, you know, use you and then that's it. We're done. Like, where is the love in that? Yeah. Yeah, there, it's pornography is completely destructive, you know, and if, if we were to be completely honest about it, that that in and of itself, watching porn or bringing porn into your home is actually promoting a culture that is okay with, you know, sometimes rape or is okay yeah. with sometimes um, uh, sexually assaulting people yeah. and abusing people, you know, men and women. And it's a, it's also creates a false standard that, you know, the majority of the women or majority of real people, wives, right. Don't look like that. Or husbands don't look like that. Mm -hmm. And it automatically creates this false standard and expectation of what our sex life is supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. And then to make it even worse, it's like, do you really want your spouse having sex with you thinking about some other man or woman? (laughs) You know, like that's there's there's nothing healthy and there's nothing sane about that. And in in my opinion, there's there is no such thing as a successful open marriage. And that's essentially what you're doing is you're allowing other people to come mm, into your point. marriage, to come into your house. And it's it's never it never works. It actually breaks down the fundamental things that make marriage and exclusivity important mm. in matrimony in in love and showing affection towards one another part of the reason why the family unit is so valuable in the structure in and of itself is so important for society is because we teach each other right we show each other love and affection exclusively in different ways and so when i marry you i i dedicate and commit myself to you, you yeah. know, emotionally, sexually, physically, you know, mentally and all that stuff to be ex- and I and I commit myself and I make a vow to be committed to you exclusively yeah. for you. And that right there is is special and important and it's meaningful. And it's if you think of it this way, how counterproductive it is, it's the world struggles to feel significant, right? People in the world struggle to feel significant. We feel yeah. down, we feel depressed, we feel alone. So then now you have this institution that God created yeah. called marriage where you don't have to be alone. You have a support system. You have shared morals and yeah. shared views, like shared values. In it, yeah. And now you become a part of this this small community that can edify and build you yeah. up and show you love and affection and all those things help improve who you are and kind of level you up in a way and all of that is broken down when we mistreat and abuse the things that make marriage so special in the first place yeah you know the the love respect the exclusivity the the emotional um partnership you know that we have the physical connection and all of that stuff we're looking for the spark but we're denying and we're overlooking and we're leaving out all the most important elements that develop that yeah you know, nobody, no woman in their right mind would ever feel good about watching a man, right? Let's say their dream man, and he's going around and he's asking this. He walks up to the first random woman and says, oh, my gosh, you're the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. You know, would you just be with me? I love you. I can't live without you. You're my everything. You're my world. And she's like, oh, get away from me. And then the next person that walks up, oh, my gosh, you're so beautiful. Your eyes are amazing. I can't live with I have to be with you. You know, marry me. And then she's just like, what the heck, you weirdo? And then finally, five five women later comes to you and says the exact same thing. And you're literally watching them and listening to them. Damn, that's sad. How would that make you feel special? How would that make you feel important? How would that make you feel valuable and not the fifth choice? Mm-hmm. You know, like that's... And so what we're doing and when we're allowing things like pornography and we're allowing other people uh, to come into our relationship in that way, in a sexual way, we're just throwing out everything that makes our marriage exclusive and unique and beautiful and valuable. That's a good point. Um, And and so I I just come against pornography so hard because I, I was addicted to it for a long time, you know, and there's nothing positive about it. It's yeah. absolutely 100% destructive. There is no upside. 
zero, none. Yeah. And if we were going to take into perspective, you know, our sex life, you know, I have to be honest too. Like this is for, it's designed for married couples. Yeah. If you're not married, you can apply principles that will help you bring and elevate and cultivate affection in your relationship, but it will never be the same as if you were married. It will never, ever be the same as if you were exclusive and committed one to another. God designed it that way. And that On is purpose. Yes, that is the <laughs> peak. That is the yeah. ultimate relationship that you can have is, is sex or intercourse between a husband and a wife. It doesn't get more intimate than that. That is the yeah. ultimate. And when you do it right and you do it in a healthy way, even more so, that's the pinnacle right, of, of all these wonderful things coming together in this one yeah. occasion or moment. Outside of that, if you bring in pornography, you're yeah. ruining it. If you're not married, you're ruining it. It will never be the same. I'm just <laughs> being just honest. Like, I'm going to turn this off now. <laughs> I'm just being honest. If you if you are struggling, right? If like with images or um, having desire for another man or another woman, like you're you're taking away from what it could be. Yeah. You know, our anxieties, our stresses, our 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 issues, our hangups. You know, our our habits. All of that takes away from you know having that that deeper, more uh, intimate connection and relationship yeah. with our spouse. So it's really important. And too, like, I don't want it to be misunderstood either. Like, just because it says submit, a lot of people have a really hard time with that word. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like, submission is willingness, right? Together with me um, respecting who you are and allowing myself yeah. to be under your authority. Okay. So when the Bible says submit, yes, Submit means like you should do this if you want to have a successful relationship. It does not mean if your spouse is abusive and he's a jerk. Put up and he's with a, it. Yeah, and you just have to put up with it. That is not what that means. Mm -hmm. Here's the context, right? If, if I'm a God-fearing man and I have the Holy Spirit working in me and the Holy Spirit and, and the fruit of the Spirit are all these other things amongst them are love, patience, peace, right kindness yes if, if i'm being all of those things to you and, and, and cherishing you as my wife and i'm treating you with love i'm treating you with patience i'm treating you with kindness you know i'm doing all these things your willingness to submit to me that's easy yeah. like who wouldn't want to be loved by a husband like that and who wouldn't want to be a good wife to a husband like that and so your respect for me is also relative to my ability to be a loving, compassionate, yeah. and a sacrificial husband to you. All right? The Bible also says that a husband should be willing to lay down his life for his wife as, as Jesus laid down his life for the church. So if I'm sacrificing myself <laughs> yeah. for you, like your love for me, that's it's almost like going to come natural. Yeah. You know, because just like the knight in shining armor, right? It's the concept of this guy coming back to save the girl and, and no matter superhero for us yeah like a superhero and so no matter what's happening in my life no matter what's happening in my day if amongst everything that's going on i can stop and remember you and and tell you i love you before i leave kiss you before i go hug you when i get home think of you when i'm on the road you know buy you flowers for random occasions if i'm thinking about you and i'm coming back for you and i'm I'm cultivating our relationship by showing you love and affection in ways that are meaningful to you. You're going to respect me as a result. Yeah. It's 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 a, a two way street, you know, like it, it's the, in this relationship. It should be reciprocated. And then the other way around, the, the, the difficult part is we get so caught up in, well, I'm not going to respect you. I'm not going to love you until you respect me. Yeah, and that's where the division and the destruction yeah. starts because really the world today is more like satisfy you first do yeah. you first it's all about you first and that's just not the way it works especially not in a committed relationship yeah. anybody that's in a relationship will know it's it's not always 50 50 like sometimes you're doing most of the heavy lifting 
Sometimes you're having to sacrifice. You know, right now, even right now, like I'm going through, you know, a difficult time, you know, just emotionally with family and stuff. We had a, a loss of um, a loved one. And so maybe I'm not pulling my weight like I usually do, you know. So that means you might have to do a little extra to make up for that. And that's just life. That's relationship. Yeah. So if you were to say, well, I'm not going to respect you until you love me better, or I'm not going to respect you until you love me how you were loving me before, like we may never get there. Yeah. But it's precisely in our ability to serve one another where the love of God, where exactly what Jesus taught us to do, where God and his spirit can really move in us. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm not being respectable and I'm not worthy of your respect, you respecting me allows the Holy Spirit to convict me be like, bro, you need to step it up, like, <laughs> you know, really, and bring that conviction to have me repent, like, I'm sorry that I'm acting this way, or I'm mm -hmm. sorry that I did that, and vice versa. You may not be, you know, being very lovable or deserve <laughs> my love, but my ability to love you even still, yeah. you know, as, as God wants me to, will allow you to have that conviction in your own heart to say, man, he's still loving me, and soften you up and be like, you know what, I'm sorry for... For being this way or doing that or saying that and that's yeah. that's really where we we um how do we say it? we grow together as a couple and the love and the intimacy part comes into play and so then when it comes to the sex part we're not you know it's not like we're asking each other to do a chore that neither of us want to do <laughs> but yeah. we've cultivated this like yeah. If you want, you know, our, our pastor says this, if you want your wife to please you in the bed, you need to please her outside the bed. Yeah, shirt that says that, guys. <laughs> Seriously. And that's that's great. That's amazing advice. Yeah. Amazing advice. And God made it so that even in your body, like you start like you might be OK for a day, maybe a couple <laughs> days. But once you start hitting like that third day, your body's like, I just got to have it. <laughs> You know, but what what that is is a reminder for you to be nice. It should be it a should reminder. should be to be reminder. nice, you know, to your mm -hmm. spouse, to be loving, to be compassionate, to do, you know, to be helpful, to be her partner. And so when you start doing that and you start really just coming together as a as a couple and a, as a husband and wife, being the husband that you're called to be, her being the wife that she's yeah. called to be. You doing what you need to do outside the bed. I mean, it could be something as simple as taking a walk, holding hands. It could be simple as a card or some flowers. It could be even more simple, like doing a load of laundry, lightening her load, lightening the load during the day. You know, she's if she's the, the breadwinner in the family, maybe that means you're taking care of homework with the kids, you know, while she's at work and she comes back. And yeah. if you're both working, maybe that means you go the extra mile and you say, honey, I got I got dinner tonight. You know, whatever your situation is, if you lighten the burden for her, then, man, guaranteed when it's when it's go time, <laughs> man, you, you're not going to have to struggle to get there. Yeah. You know, you're not going to have to be begging, you know, to have sex. It's going to be something that is it's been cultivated. It's, it's and it'll come. I don't want to say come naturally because it takes effort, but yeah. that intimacy will be there where you're not having to hunt for it or beg for it you know <laughs> what i mean true. and it and it takes on a whole different feeling and a whole different type of pleasure when you can actually be intimate with each other because you're both emotionally available right so people are probably just like what the heck does this intimacy means so mind you joe was married before and he dated a lot i dated too obviously we both had sex before marriage and the reason why I say this is because for me, it was really important to know and understand, like, like it was intimidating to have sex with you after knowing, like, dude, you dated a lot of people. Like, I'm, I don't, like, I don't know. I'm not experienced. But one of the things that I understood that had nothing to do with how many times you have had sex before, it had to do with literally God in your relationship. And you can be like, dude, yeah. that's kind of weird. It's not weird. It's not weird at all because it has to do with the the cycle of what he's saying about being nice and being respectful and helping and, and doing all this. This is a different type of life. If you don't know that life, then you're missing out. Yeah. And what I mean by this is because you don't have that life, 
you're just getting by. Everybody's doing whatever. Your wife is probably dry to the bone because she's tired. She works also. You work and she comes home and she does the laundry. She does the dinner. And then you're just like, dude, dinner's not even ready yet. And you guys are both coming home at the same time, you know? And then you're just like, she's like, man, I'm not even in love anymore. And it's not that you're not in love anymore. Is that 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 phase of dating, it's over. Now this is real life. This is where you cultivate and you actually make the effort that you should have been doing when you were dating. You should do that now, you know, because this is where it actually matters. And now, you know, instead of doing it the right way, say it's like, dude, easy way, fast food style, just watch some pornography, like just get it up and go do what you got to do. And then that's it. It's over. And then you both end up feeling dry. The guy ends up feeling like, well, I got what I needed, I guess. You know, but there's something that's missing there. Yeah. And it's the main ingredients. Like, wh- why do you stay faithful when you were dating? Because you were in love. Because you made that effort. Because you were constantly thinking about that person. Because you were just, these emotions were so strong. But now we wonder why, like, faithfulness is, isn't a thing. Like, yeah. we, you wonder why? Like, this is why, yeah. because you're not meeting their needs at all. Yeah. And you're not going to meet their needs unless you're doing it the way that God intended. And you, excuse me, and you can say like, well, Vanessa, I'm not Christian and I like we're faithful. OK, let me see how many years and write this down. Let me see how many years. And I really would love to spend a week like like Pastor Gary would say, like a fly on the wall to actually see like the true relationship behind closed doors and in your home, the environment, your heart and your wife's heart. I would really like to see that. Then yeah. you can tell me that because somebody somebody is always sacrificing yeah. something. Yeah. When when there's no mutual commitment and mutual agreement that we're gonna step into this together and agree and make a vow you know, even if you don't believe in God, at least making yeah. a vow and a commitment publicly in front of others, in front of witnesses. If you're both not entering into this agreement or this contract, however you want to look at it and and moving in together and deciding that through thick and thin, for better or worse, we're going to do this together. And there's no there's no walkout, you know, clause where I can just walk out anytime I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. Like unless you're do unless you make that commitment, somebody is sacrificing something. Either the husband or the, I'm sorry, either the boyfriend or the girlfriend is, is sacrificing their true desire to want to be married mm-hmm. for the sake of, well, I just want you to be with me. You know, if, okay, if, if, if you stay with me, then we don't have to talk about marriage. Yeah. Somebody's giving up something on a greater or grander scale than the other. And, and in that sense, they're not equally yoked. And that's a very dangerous place to be yeah. because somebody's going to snap. Somebody's going to get tired. Somebody's going to get emotionally exhausted and it's so easy to just walk away yeah and not only that but like guys satan is the ruler of this world like i need you to really understand that so his number one job is to destroy marriages his number one job is to destroy you individually as a person so if, if he's basically surrounding you and hovering over you he knows your weaknesses he knows what like what you what you struggle with. He knows when to knock the door exactly at the perfect time. He knows what to put in front of you when your flesh is weak and you're just like, you know, you need something that DM slips in or that all of a sudden that ad comes in with that girl showing a little bit much too much, you know, to handle. Like he knows, he knows it for the girl. He knows it for the guy. And the part, the part that's so important in this is that if there was really that communication and that constant effort even if you didn't feel good even if your flesh was failing that day but your wife and you know as your wife and the husband like they're having this relationship then even on those really sad days or those discouraging days by your husband being what you need him to be and by the wife being what she needs to be then Satan has no opportunity because you come and you save the day but what about if you don't come and save the day what happens then or the next day or the next day or the next day, it's just like mind games in your head all day long, every day. And then when you go and you share it with your husband, oh, I'm feeling like this. Ah, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? You're always thinking this way. But if they're being vocal about what they need, 
Like, yeah. why can't you be there for them? You're supposed to be willing. You're willing to to die for them. Like, if somebody came and shot your wife, it'd be nice to be like, oh no, like in the movies. But it's like, I need this from you. Like, what? You what? You need what from me? Like, like really? You yeah. can't do that. You know? Yeah. It's, everybody says that communication is so important, but not very many people are willing to communicate. You know, why do you think that is? If if you wanted to hear the truth, you know, then then when we asked for it, we wouldn't get so upset about it. But sometimes we don't want to hear the truth. Not really. <laughs> Not so, really. So here, here's my point in, in bringing that up is like communication is important. It's one of the, the biggest reasons that people end up getting a divorce. Mm. And we would all do ourselves a favor by being OK with at least listening to what the other person has to say. Yeah. And in this particular case, when it comes to sex, I would challenge anybody that's listening to this. You know, when was the last time that you even talked with your spouse about sex? Like, when was the last time you even said, Dang. like, either husband to wife or wife to husband? You know, like, what do you like? <laughs> you know, what is it that you like? You know, I don't know what I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I don't want to get too graphic, too crazy. <laughs> But I mean, if it's like, if it's like textbook one, two, three, you know, and then it's over, like you probably need to have a conversation <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm saying it, I'm not even trying to be joking, but I only say that because, you know, we're creatures of habit too yeah. and we like what we like. And if it's working, right, if, it's, if it feels it? good, then why change it? Oh, heck no. Well, yeah, because that's how it gets. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's real life. You know, but it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And it could get better. It can be better. The problem is, is that we're taught, a lot, at least like in Latin culture, like you don't talk about that because you're dirty, you're filthy, you're gross. Yeah. You know, but it's like, obviously you're here. So <laughs> your mom and dad figured something out. You know what I mean? There was an yeah. agreement somewhere. And if you have kids, same thing, right? <laughs> so we need to change the way we think yeah. about things. And have a conversation about it. When was the last time you talked about it? Husbands, when was the last time you asked your wife? Like, do you even like that? Does that even feel good to you? Right? Or, okay, if not, then what do you like? Are you embarrassed to hear that? No, that's terrible. I don't like that. And that's tough, right? I get it. But wouldn't it be much better if you knew you were pleasing your wife? Yeah. In the way that she wanted to be pleased? And don't you think that on the other side of that, she'd be more willing to please you? You know, or at least be more into it, you know, <laughs> and, and and I'm serious because that all that matters. Yeah. Right. Like like the sexual part is a part that guys that that men crave so much because it's a way that we express love. It's a way that we express intimacy and it's a way that we feel loved in a way that that we receive love. Yeah. So all those things are vital for the relationship. But it's one of those things that we just we don't give enough attention to. We think that just because we finished, like that that's it. we're good. That's Molded. that's good. It can get better than that. Yeah. And even more so, your your wife is not just there to to just to to finish a job and then go about her business, you know, like like mm -hmm. nothing happened. It's supposed to be intimate for both of you. It just so happens that in this sense, the men it, it's it's it, how do I say it? It probably means much more to the man than to the woman. But us men don't give it the attention that we should to make it more meaningful, more intimate. Mm -hmm. And it could even mean more to our spouse yeah. if we put the time and work into it. So ask your wife, you know, or maybe there's something that's happening that you don't like. But you're just like, I'm just happy that we're here. You know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's, it's few and far between. So I'm just going to take what I can get. Like, no, it, it can get better than that. Talk about it. Yeah. You know, love each other through the process. Figure out some things that, that you do like. Maybe, you know, with being respectful to each yeah. other and not doing something that the other person doesn't want to do. Not doing something that, that you're both not comfortable with. And the Bible is very clear, too, about specific mm -hmm. guidelines and in, 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 in a sexual relationship. So per pornography is a no-no. Mm -hmm. Like, you shouldn't bring in a third party, obviously, like nobody that's not you and her, you know, 
nobody outside should be involved in that. Yeah. Okay, don't even bring stuff in. You know, don't don't um you know like anal sex out of the question. That's a no no. People are like, What? We yeah. like we like, can we have that verse? <laughs> talk about stuff, you know, talk about stuff and and be okay and mature about it. Mm-hmm. Like it it's I mean, yeah, it's funny sometimes, you know, but but even those conversations in and of themselves develop an intimacy because you guys can have these conversations that are only for you and her only for yeah. you know for a, for a husband and wife that nobody else can be a part of so it's another opportunity to be exclusive for one another because yeah. you don't you know you're not hope you're not having these conversations <laughs> with with just random people or whoever <laughs> but um yeah it, it gets better you know it can be amazing and it can be something wonderful and intimate and something beautiful excuse me and a lot of people get stuck, you know, watching soap operas, novellas, watching movies and, <laughs> and saying like, oh, I can never have a relationship yeah, like that. It's sad. And it's not true. Yeah. You only have what you cultivate. If you yeah. allowed yourself to get into the situation, it's because you allowed it. And that means that you can put in the work to make it better, to make it to improve it, you know, to make things different, to make it more pleasurable, to make it more exciting, to make it more intimate, yeah. to make it more meaningful. Like you can do that, you know. I was um, and that made me think about when you were saying like it might be funny and stuff. But the thing is, sometimes with us women, like the sad part about this is that guys, like, and I'm like generalizing because it the communication part is it's not normal from all the people that I've talked to that we've talked to throughout the time. For the girls, it's the insecurity is insane. Like insecurity in the bedroom is like it's a big it's a big issue. Yeah. And the sad part about it is that if it's just like, okay, hurry up, let's go, let's do this, then the better because they don't have to deal with their insecurities. So it's sad to think that your wife is going through insecurities and you don't even know. I mean, it happened to me, like in the beginning. I mean, like with all the light, make sure everything is dark. If you could close your eyes real quick, that would be great. <laughs> you know, like because in it's so sad, like the traumas that people have gone through or the things that are in their head, you know, like now they have this spouse, you know, the love of their life. And you're supposed to know these things about them. You're supposed to know the things that hurt them, the things that made them feel the way that they feel or, the, or why they do the things that they do. You know, but you don't even know that sometimes you just kind of go about your day and you're just like, as long as I have what I need, then that's it. And then you wonder why you only have sex once a month. You know, like if you really talked about these things that, you know, also bring healing, you know, like your your relationship would be like like off the chain because it's like not only does this person know the deepest, darkest part of me, but like he or she accepts me the way that I was or with my past. And that's huge. That's really big. So homework for you guys this week is talk to your spouse about your sex life. Number two is if you're not having intimacy, schedule it. And you're like, what? Yes, schedule it. I don't care if it's the husband. I don't care if it's the wife. Make the effort to say on Mondays, rain or shine we're gonna have sex or whatever day is that you know it's the less busiest that you can go and the reason why it's because it's proven that if the more sex that you have it regularly just like anything else if you're drinking water if you like it starts to become something that you crave or you want if you don't then you're going to be using other things to satisfy that that need because it's there like you can't tell me that it isn't because it is like you would have to be like i don't know just and very interesting person to not want to have sex. <laughs> um, you know, and so just make sure that you do schedule it. You know, you talk to your wife and say, I would love, you know, to have it this day and take turns every week, you know, have the wife or the husband, whichever's turn it's going to be to make sure that you guys set the mood or set the tone, whatever it's going to be like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't even know what to do. Like, you know, I don't know, guys, Google it, search it, what, you know, how to yeah, be like, careful with that. But, but yeah, <laughs> yes, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just find things that you guys can do together, you know, like, um, just, of course, guys try to keep it 
you know, like Joe said, but do things that will kind of just be interesting to, to know your wife, to explore your husband, to explore your wife and just to love on each other more than anything to just show each other's love and affection. So if you can use those as the guidelines, would this show my spouse love? Then I think that would be your best bet to be able to play it safe. You know, if this is going to cause like embarrassment or if this is going to cause pain or if this is going to cause something that's going to create like a division between us, then no, obviously it's going to be a no. But for that, you actually have to know your spouse. Yeah. So you have some homework to do. Yep. I like that. So if if on the other side of that, right, if it's going to be scheduled, do everything within your power not to cancel because that yes. get really discouraging. Yes. And then it, my advice would be if in a relationship, if you are the person that wants to have more sex um, and it's the, you know, let's say it's me, right? I, let's say I want to have more sex, but it's just not something that interests you, right? For, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And there are different, you know, causes, and different reasons for that. But generally speaking, if I'm the one that desires to have more sex, then I need to do what I can to be more desirable for Mm -hmm. you. So if that means lightening the burden, taking some of the things off your to-do list, if that, if that's what's meaningful for you, or if, if me being a little more touchy feely during the day, you know, to make you feel good about yourself, you know, please, please, please do not belittle each other. Don't, don't body shame each other because that has an effect a That's psychological, huge. a huge effect, right? Like, don't make fun of each other, you know, calling each other fat or you're big or, you know, making fun of each other's bodies. Like, that, that is one of the things that, that really can kill intimacy in a relationship because yeah, it has psychological damage that the other person carries. You know, respect yeah. your husband and wife. Honor your husband and wife. Love each other. Build each other up. You know, and that, that feeling of, man, no matter how I feel about myself, my spouse loves me and desires mm-hmm. me like that's a big deal when it comes to intimacy yeah. so if i'm the one that wants to have more sex i need to be more desirable so that means that i'm going to make an effort right to meet your needs emotionally okay? and so yeah. just take that into consideration and i hope this helps um yeah we we appreciate you guys and we're here for you yes love you guys see right. you bye let's pray oh never <laughs> mind <laughs> Lord, I just want to say thank you for um, just putting things together the way that you did and making husband and wife and this institution of marriage be about exclusivity and intimacy and separating each other uh, from everyone else, from the rest of the world, from other men and other women, to be able to commit ourselves one to another to say, I am exclusively and solely yours. My body, my mind, my heart, you know, my, my affection is all for you and yours for me. Lord, I just thank you that, that you allowed us to have that place that we can have even the most intimate conversations. And it's okay because we are an open book one for another. It would help the people that are listening to this to be able to communicate and even talk about the most intimate details like sex so that their relationship can be more intimate, can be more connected can be a much deeper, loving relationship the way that you intended us to have. But we thank you, we love you, and praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you guys. Bye, guys.